So in this video, I'm gonna uh, try to um, recollect or document the procedure or the workflow uh, that I just uh, uh, completed for carrying out checkerboard tests using the SW4 code. And uh, this is for uh, this is for the uh, ambient noise agent tomography uh, for the Blair Wallace. Uh, uh, Blair Wallace area that we have like three arrays. This is for area one called BW1, and it's a square array that's uh, um, that's uh, that sits on the top of a ridge, um, uh, which is about uh, 15 miles uh, east of uh, the campus of University of Wyoming. And uh, Wei has his uh, PhD thesis. Um, uh, documenting the entire inversion for this particular uh, data set and uh, what I've been trying to do is to actually use the SW4 to to do some checkerboard tests for that particular data set and uh, here are some cross sections um, we had map view plots of the checkerboard, checkerboard uh, uh, tests, tests uh, that was done before and uh, it, it's already inside of the uh, EPSL uh, revision that we submitted like a, like three or four months ago, and then the the editor was saying that uh, oh no the reviewer was saying that we should add some cross sections of checkerboard tests right to see how the uh, how the how the checkers are recovered with respect to depth right here and here are some results some. Uh, some quite interesting results actually. So, so, so these are three cross sections uh, in the x direction. So this is x equals to uh, 88. So I've got a script. Um, so that's the script for for creating those figures. Uh, I've got like uh, six cross sections, right? Three of them are on the uh, x-axis. So x equals to 88, 135, and 183. And then y equals to 88, 135, and 183. So the entire simulation box is a uh, 270 meter by 270 meter. So 135 meter is like uh, right in the middle of the of the simulation box. And then 88 is like one quarter, right? And then 183 is like uh, three quarters. So these are just the three cross sections, like evenly distributed across. Uh, um, across the entire uh, simulation uh, domain, right? And then that's in x direction and that's in y direction. And then, um, and then if you look at the figure, that's x equals to 88, x equals to 135, and then x equals to 183, right? And then this is for y, y equals to one, uh, 88, y equals to uh, what, 135, and then y equals to 183, right? Um, the checkerboard pattern, so this is the vertical axis, right, and then on top of it, it's topography uh, of that ridge, basically. Um, so, so for the x cross sections, the horizontal axis is y, so y runs from like 0 to like 270, right, and then the entire simulation box extends to like 60 meter depths, but I didn't actually plot anything below 40 meter because uh, there's no recovery of checkerboards below like uh, 30 meters or something. So, so this is uh, this is um, uh, this is like uh, the maximum extent, the maximum depth extent of our dataset, right? So the kernel only has sensitivity down to like uh, this is 20, right? So 20. Uh, so, so uh, in the interior, this this slice, this cross section is uh, in the middle of the simulation box, right? So in the middle of the simulation box, um, the, the the recovery is deeper, right? The the checkerboard pattern is recovered deeper. Uh, you can reach uh, 25 meter maybe, right? Maybe 25 meter in the center of the box, 25 meter. That's like the maximum extent. And then anything below 25 meter or 30 meter is like a, a no recovery. Right. And then as you move to the boundaries, these two cross sections are like uh, close to the boundary, right? Close to the boundary of the simulation box. Uh, 
it's um it's um it can hardly reach like 20 meters right it cannot reach 20 meters so so satisfactory recovery of the patterns checkerboard patterns can only reach um, about 20 meters at the boundary of the simulation box but it can reach like 25 meters close to the center of the simulation um, so 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 what's actually the workflow for creating all those uh, all those uh, checkboard tests the results right so so just before I forget anything let, let me let me just document everything so so I can so I can uh, so I can rem remind myself how I did this thing if uh, if uh, if I need to do the same thing for the other two data sets right um, okay so 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 here's our um, here's our um, let me just de delete everything in my old workspace uh, uh, glade p old then work then potion do I want to delete it maybe not right uh, so so that's my job directory right so if I look above it I got like uh, the jobs directory and then for the waveform field for the wave field and then kernel directory these two directories are just the links to scratch the space <coughs> So FWF points to uh, this particular subdirectory inside of my scratch space, and then kernel KER directory uh, points to this particular location in my scratch space, and then this jobs directory and VM directory, the velocity model and the jobs directory are inside of my um, permanent project space. I think, right? Uh, where's my work? So, so that's my that's the project uh, directory. The project directory is purged. Uh, every year, so 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 it has a longer lifespan. And then inside of the jobs directory, I've got a bunch of uh, scripts, right? And then I've got a bunch of um, uh, job scripts, and also a bunch of uh, parameter input files, that kind of thing, right? Um, so where do we begin, right? So where do we begin? Let's begin with the source code. So now the source code are hosted on GitLab. So in order to actually, in order to actually uh, grab all the source code, uh, what I have to do is to do a git. I have to do a git clone, right? And then just go to GitLab, go to GitLab, and uh, So, so that's the GitLab repository. That's called F3DWI, right? And then if I want to uh, clone it, I can make a copy. Clone with SSH, right? And then I can make a copy of the thing here. And then go directly to my terminal and then git clone and then just paste that uh, that text that I just copied over from GitLab. And then it's going to make a direct copy of everything that's on GitLab. Um, the problem is that this this source code is uh, still being actively developed. Um, I've, I've 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 been making changes to it pretty much every day, and uh, uh, and there are significant changes. So so most of my work for now is focused inside of this SW4. Uh, no, inside of the SRC directory. That's our source directory. Uh, and then some changes in SW4, right? And then later on, I'm gonna work in the DG directory, in the AWP and DG directories, to try to integrate them together. So, uh, so, so once you've made a copy, once you've made a copy of the source code, uh, uh, you can you can create a new directory called build, right? Just make DRR build, right? For now, it's not gonna work because, uh, oh. Oh, sorry. And then, and then, uh, once you finish the cloning, you're gonna see a directory called F3DWI in small case. And then you can go into that directory and then create the build directory. 
just make the R build, right? This this build directory doesn't exist uh, inside of the GitLab repository, so so you have to create this one by yourself, and then go into the build directory, go into the build directory, and then just type CMake, right? But this CMake uh, will have to have the correct version, and then have to have the uh, must have the correct uh, um, uh, command line arguments, right? So uh, if you if you look at the my CMake version, it's a uh, 3.12.1, right? That's like the latest version uh, on Cheyenne. Um, so 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 if I want to search for a uh, module Spider CMake, right? And then it's gonna list all the versions that's available that's installed on this particular system. And then uh, if you wanna um, install it, all I have to do is do a module uh, load, right? Module load, and then CMake this thing. Then that's gonna load the latest CMake. So so the, so the uh, it's very important that you that that you use the latest CMake version. Otherwise, it's not gonna compile. Uh, and then, and then, and then, uh, after you have loaded the correct uh, CMake, and then checked the version that it's uh, larger than 3.12, right? So this is larger than 3.12. Then, then, um, you have to type the CMake command uh, like the following. Um, For some reason, it's not showing me the entire command. So it's supposed to be CMake dot dot, right? Because <coughs> the CMake master file is in the upper directory. That's uh, CMake lists dot txt, right? That's what's actually controlling all the compiling process. So 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 in principle, you should be just typing CMake dot dot, right? But in our case, we have to specify some very important uh, command line arguments for CMake. Uh, uh, let me just go back to my own uh, desktop computer and show you uh, yeah that's um, that's the entire uh, option right <coughs> that's the entire command line option right so so this option is going to allow me to actually skip the Changes in the R path, right? Because um, uh, by default, the CMake is gonna remove all the R paths built into the binary, right? After it finishes building it, um, but I don't want to do that. I don't want to CMake to do that. CMake to do that. So I have to make CMake skip R paths equals to on, and then I have to specify the project, uh, the the projection library called PROJ4, where it is actually located, right? Uh, on this particular computer, uh, on this particular system. So, so, uh, and then I have to sort of specify the BLAST library, the BLAST library where it's uh, the BLAST is actually uh, installed, right? Um, after I specify these two libraries, and then I can put dot dot, so it's going to start to compile the entire code. Um, um, the thing is that I I'm not exactly. I don't exactly remember where my project. It's supposed to be in my home directory tools, right? Tools. Oh. And then I'm supposed to have proj4, right? And then oh, um, build. Right. That's that's my. So that's my proj4 directory, right? Um. So what I was supposed to do is to actually. To, to stick this um, path in there, right? So it's a uh, glade home poach and tools, and then prj.4 glade p home, I think. It's not glade home, p home, I think. And then prj4, then build. Right? Uh, I'm not exactly sure if I got the directory correct. And then blast, do the same thing for blast, then, um, yeah. I'm 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 not gonna recompile everything because it's gonna take some time. But uh, it will compile if you actually set the libraries um, 
pairs to be correct. So, so, so in order for this, uh, for the compiling process to succeed, uh, the, the PROJ.4 has to be installed somewhere, and then the open blast has to be installed somewhere, right? That's like two prerequisites for building the entire thing. And then once once you've type once you've finished doing CMake, then you type make install, right? And then everything, all the binaries are going to be installed underneath the Bing directory. Again, the Bing directory is not going to be downloaded from the GitLab. You have to build it on your own system in order to, for the binaries to actually work on your system. For now, there's only like, uh, uh, how many? 19 executables, right? It's actually 18 because one of them is actually, so, so this KPP has a parallel version and a sequential version. Uh, these are actually from the same source code. It's actually 18 binaries. Uh, some of them are not so important, but some of them are actually quite important. SW4 is um, is not my binary. I made some changes to it, but uh, it's a binary that's created by SW4 uh, uh, source code, right? That's uh, Lawrence Livermore's uh, source code. Um, and then everything else, everything, every other binaries were created by 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 myself, right? <laughs> uh, through this kind of building process, right? Uh, so so all those binaries actually has specific purposes. They are all useful, right? They are actually built on top of a very large library that's uh, dedicated for full three D waveforming versions, uh, and uh, the total number of binaries are going to increase later on once I. Uh, once I finish integrating all the three different simulation codes, um, so so now let's uh, let's go back to the project directory. Right? That's how you actually got the source code. That's how you actually obtain all the binaries to actually uh, do the work, do the work. And now let's um, let's look into uh, this uh, particular job directory. Right. So the first thing that we have to do is to actually create a text file called inv. In. That's like the control file for uh, for the entire inversion, basically, right? So, so if you want to look at the, the content of this uh, this particular file, it's uh, gonna show a bunch of uh, specifications or key value pairs uh, in this kind of format. It has to be in this kind of format, right? The key doesn't cannot cannot change. It's case sensitive, right? You have to actually write it in this particular way. Um, and then it has to be a colon, right? It has to be a colon following the key directly without a space, and then a space, and then followed by the actual value for that particular key, right? Uh, it, the, the the parsing code in the C++ uh, like, uh, in my C++ code is not so intelligent to actually recognize different kinds of formats yet, but uh, maybe later on, once I have time to to improve it, uh, we can actually make it better, right? Uh, the first four lines has to be in this particular specific order. They have to be in this particular. The first one, two, three, four, four lines of the code of, of the of the input file must be in this particular specific order. And then all the rest of the files, all the rest of the lines can have arbitrary order, right? The reason is because the first four lines has to be read by SW4. Um, and then and then. Uh, Write info has like values from like zero to like three. One, two, and three are different levels for doing inversions. Zero is just uh, the raw SW4 that you, it's it's original capabilities. It doesn't actually um, output any kind of a screen view, screen view that that's going to be used for for, for 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 computing kernels later on. NT skip the number of time steps to skip, so it's going to be store every fourth time step. Doesn't have attenuation. Model path. That's where the velocity model is going to be stored, right? And then the velocity model for now, for for three D inversions, we have to use a particular file format called R file. And there's documentation about the file format inside of SW4's um, user menu. It's uh, actually quite detailed. Um, I also have a C++ code called RFG that's going to generate those R files um, following the specific format. IPARFLAC is specifying what kind of 
kernels are going to be computed. If it's two, then it's VP and VS kernel. So it's going to be P and S velocities. And, and for now, there's only this specific hearing that's being implemented. If we want to know um, bulk and shear modulus kernel, if we want to compute bulk and shear modulus kernels, if we want to compute kernels for anisotropy and uh, attenuation, that kind of thing, then we I will add those kernels later on. But and for now, IK flag is going to control uh, which level, uh, which le which which kernel is going to be uh, written out to disk. So it's going to be VPVS density, right? So if it's two, then it's a uh, VPVS and density. But I'm I don't want a VP because uh, it's uh, ambient noise data. So I'm going to invert for shear wave velocity. So so the second sensitivity for VS is going to be written to the disk, and then I don't want to invert for density. And then NX skip, NY skip, and NZ skip. These skips are sort of a decimation rate in the X, Y, and Z dimensions. So the entire simulation box is like uh, uh, 270 meters in the x and y uh, directions and then it's uh, about 60 66 meters in the z direction so so in the x and y direction uh, uh, i want to decimate by a rate of 5 in both composite grid so so the entire mesh is going to have like two two composite grids the top grid is going to be curvilinear grid and it's going to be um, uh, have a horizontal grid spacing of one meter and then vertical grid spacing that's going to be uh, variable right depending upon topography and then the the bottom subgrid is going to be just a cartesian rectangular subgrid it's going to be exactly one meter grid spacing for both horizontal directions and the, the vertical direction so and then the decimation rate for both subgrid in the x direction is going to be five right in the x direction and then in the y direction it's also going to be five and then in the z direction it's going to be one so so in the z direction it's going to save every grid point uh, on the, uh, the strand field in, on, on every grid point right and then and then some very important distinctions here uh, box vm and box the simulation box is 270 meters um, by 270 meters that's like uh, stored inside of this particular text file right but there's also a VM box. So SW4 actually asks us to provide a velocity model that's slightly bigger than the simulation box. So 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 the velocity model box and the simulation box can be uh, slightly different. So velocity model box is supposed to be slightly bigger, right? And uh, I will talk about how to generate those boxes uh, uh, in, in 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 just a while, right? And then this box VM. And this box, simulation box, the velocity model box and the simulation box has to be has to have exactly the same uh, azimuth. The x coordinate, uh, the x, the positive x axis must have the the same azimuth. But the but the but the simulation box has to be embedded inside of this uh, velocity model box. Uh, and then SR list, that's like a source receiver list. Sources can be receiver. Uh, re receivers can also act as sources. So. So in all, all the inversion codes, sources and the receivers are put into the same file, and then this is going to be the the, 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 the file, right? Um, and then the source time function. So for MNO's Green's function calculations, um, uh, the synthetic strand field has to be um, filtered by a source time function. And then in this case, I'm actually using a, a Butterworth bandpass filter with uh, fourth order right and then the corners is from 12 hertz to 30 hertz and why do we want to use this kind of filter it's uh, inside of our epsl f manuscript it's, um, uh, there's explanation of the, about that and then source type so source type are um, either body force or moment tensor force here it's a body force uh, body body force right body force body force that has a strength or a, magnitude of one and then the direction is like fx equals to zero fy equals to zero and fz equals to one so so it's vertical right it's not exactly perpendicular to topography it's um it's just a vertical right it's um uh, it's pointing away from no no it's uh, pointing down towards the center of the earth right so so is that something that we want to change later on i don't really know but uh, <clears throat> we are just inverting frequency dependent group delays and frequency dependent group delays are less sensitive to like uh, the direction of the source right the direction of the source um, is not going to change the a slight difference in direction of the source is not going to change the um, 
the group delay by a huge margin. Right. Uh, and then topo z max, which means the curvilinear, the bottom of the of the top uh, curvilinear subgrid. It's going to be at 50 meter, right? So at 50 meter, the curvilinear grid is going to become flat, right? At the, at the top of the curvilinear grid, it's going to be following topography, but at the base, at 50 meter, it's going to become flat. And then it's going to do this kind of smooth transition inside of this, um, uh, in the z direction, um, inside of this curvilinear grid. And then the, the smooth transition is going to be controlled by this kind of cubic interpolation algorithm that's provided by SW4. So, so these two parameters, and this, these are actually following the SW4 convention, SW4 keywords, basically. And then this is also SW4 keywords, grid. Uh, X is 270 meter, Y equals to 270 meter, and Z equals to 65. So it's 65 meters in depth. And the NX number of grid points in the X direction is going to be 271, right? And then the grid, in, the, the, the grid spacing is going to be 270 divided by 271 subtract 1. That's exactly 1 meter, right? And then I want to do the simulation for like 1 second. Uh, and then the synthetic seismograms will be stored in, 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 in the format of displacement. It's not going to be a velocity seismogram, it's a, it's a displacement of synthetic, synthetic seismogram. And then the forward directory, job directory, and uh, uh, par f name. That's par f name is the basically the complete the exact path, the absolute path of this particular file, imv dot in, right? Uh, yeah, that's all the required inputs for now, right? Later on, there might be more uh, required inputs, required uh, uh, parameter inputs later on, right? Um, but now let's look at how to actually create the two boxes, right? Box vm and the box. Uh, that's like the entry point of the entire workflow. Uh, let's 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 talk about that. So, in order to actually create the box for the velocity model, let's go into the VM directory. Right? Let's go into the VM directory. Lots of files inside of the VM directory, but uh, but in order to actually create the box, I have this um, shell script. Uh, that actually shows you how to actually call the box binary inside of the F3DWI Bing directory. Right? You have to specify a projection string, and this projection string is actually used by PRJ4 uh, for creating the, for selecting the correct, uh, for selecting the the appropriate um, projection. So this is going to be a UTM, and then it's going to be inside of the UTM zone three, a uh, thirteen, thirteen, right? And then the string has to be inside of the double quotes. Otherwise, it's not going to recognize it. It's going to recognize it as two separate, uh, two separate arguments instead of just the one argument. It's actually one argument, and the format has to be a string inside of double quotes. And then the second input is going to be uh, uh, Second input. It's, the second is still an input. It's a it's a UTM of the four corners of our seismic array, basically. Right. Uh, if I if I look at that, it's the uh, it's a UTM easting and loading for the four corners of the seismic array. The seismic array is actually a square square array, and then the dimension is like 190 meters by 190 meters. So. Uh, so 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 that's that particular text file records the UTM of the four corners of the seismic area, and then the next two numbers is actually the buffer zone. It's like a 50 meter buffer zone. So it's going to add 50 meters on both sides of the x-axis, and then 50 meters on both sides of the y-axis. So so it's going to be like a uh, so the box is going to have um, uh, 190 plus. 100. That's 290 meters in each of the dimensions. So it's, so the box is 290 meters by 290 meters. Uh, and then the box, the output box is going to be written into BWR. So it's going to create like two two outputs, two text output files. Um, one of them is called a box underscore R dot O, and then box underscore R dot UTM. It's going to have like two different outputs. So 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 so. Box underscore R dot UTM is going to be the UTM for the four corners of the velocity model box, and then uh, this is actually 
this particular file stores uh, the projection that's used for generating the for generating the uh, the box, and at the end, the azimuth of the positive direction of the x-axis, and then the longitude and latitude of the origin, right? Um, and then the dimension. So the dimension is what? Uh, it's uh, it's 370 meters. Uh, why is that? 370 or 270? Oh, I I think I I got the I I, I remembered wrong. So so this PW1 underscore box dot UTM is actually the 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 the, the UTM of the simulation box, the, the the four corners of the simulation box used in V1's uh, DG simulation. It's not the four corners of the uh, seismic array. So so this simulation box is already kind of, kind of 50 uh, 40 meters bigger than the seismic array, right? Seismic array is the 100. Uh, uh, 90 right then it's got a 40 meter buffer that's like 80 meters on both sides that's like 270 meters on 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 and then this uh, this uh, velocity model box is going to add 50 meters to the, uh, on each side on on uh, on this particular box so that's giving you 370 370 meter uh, simulation box uh, velocity model box right uh, so so that's going to create these two files and these two files are going to be used by um, other codes later on, so um, so it's kind of important to actually uh, put them in there, right? And then and then um, and then uh, if we go back to the jobs directory, uh, there's a similar kind of a show script in the job directory. That's for generating the simulation box for for SW4, right? So, so if we look at this particular show script, it's uh, got the same kind of a thing, right? It's got the same kind of uh, inputs, right? That's the string for PRJ4. And at the end, that's going to be the input, right? It's actually the same input, right? It's uh, bw1 underscore box dot utm. That's the utm of the four corners of v1's uh, uh, DG simulation. And at the end, this time, the buffer is like a zero meter. So, so the SW4 simulation box is going to be exactly the same as the DG simulation box. And then the, all the output are going to be stored inside of the file that has a prefix of box. So, so box.o and box.utm. So, so box.utm is going to store the the UTM of the four corners. And then uh, box.o is going to store the azimuth and longitude latitude. The projection string, it's important that the azimuth has to be exactly the same as the velocity model azimuth. Velocity model box Atmos, right? So, so uh, it's not exactly the same, right? But it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's identical to a certain precision, seven two five six six, right? To to up to this point, right? Um, and then the origin of the longitude and latitude are going to be different now, right? It's, uh, because it's a smaller box that's embedded inside of the bigger box. And then LX and LY are going to be two hundred seventy meters, right? Um, so, so that's uh, that's how the boxes are created, right? Um, and then let's go back to the VM directory, to the model velocity model directory, and then look at the next step for uh, for creating the R file that's going to be used for uh, storing the velocity model. And then R file is going to have to run this, um, to create an R file, we have to sort of run this particular shell script. And then this shell script is going to call the binary that's called RFG. RFG represents R file generator, right? It's going to generate R files. And then it's going to read an input. It's going to read a command line input. And then the second argument is, um, uh, I can't remember. The second, uh, the second command argument is for um, is for what? Let me just check the source code really quick.
Um, where's RFG? Let me see. Okay, so that's um, it's, it's a flag for read model. So, uh, so so for this particular for this particular exercise, the read model has to be larger than one, uh, larger than zero, because uh, it has to actually call this. Uh, it has to use these lines of, of code. So. Uh, read a model, flag read a model, because it has to read a binary VS model that's like a three-dimensional vector. Right. So so the second input is just a command line input, a command line argument to indicate that I have to read a certain uh, certain 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 binary inputs. That's VS dot bing I think. And then and then let's look at this particular input file, right? That's gonna control how RFG is gonna work. Uh, you have to specify where the inv dot in the the inversion parameter value is located, uh, and then you have to specify the elevation. The elevation has to be stored inside of the uh, R file. The R file has um, multiple blocks. The first block is actually the, for for storing the elevation. So we have to actually generate a binary input for the for the for the for RFG in order to actually put the correct topography into the R file. And then SW4 later on reads the R file to get the topography, to get the topography information. This the, the format of this particular binary is really simple. It's just got like a um, a few headers, right? The header is going to specify where the origin, the UTM of the origin, and then the grid spacing of that UTM sampling, and then the UTM, uh, no, 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 the the topography sampling, right? The topography sampling doesn't have to actually follow the same kind of a grid as. Uh, as the simulation grid or velocity model grid, it can be it can be arbitrary. But what what we have to do is to specify the uh, UTM of uh, spef specify the uh, topography on a uniform uh, a grid, right? And then that's the velocity model. Here it's just a shear velocity model that's uh, storing the last iteration of uh, Wade's um, shear velocity model for that particular box. And then the output the output R file file name, and then um, what's gonna be this thing? Don't exactly remember. So zero zero one one hundred fifty two two one. Let me just check the source code really quick. Um, so zero zero two. So x buff zero just means I'm not adding any extra buffering uh, to the uh, is that true? Um, one two three four five zero one two three four five. Uh, that's zero, one, two, three, four, five. So four, five, x buff and y buff, right? And then, um, four, five, x buff and y buff, and then six is the number of blocks. Uh, the number of blocks we have just the one block, right? Sometimes you may want to specify different blocks because um, if the depth range is large then the velocity model could change quite significantly and at at a, at a, a larger depth you may want to use a different uh, grid size for representing the velocity model right uh, because the variations in velocity is going to be really small right spatial variations and then the depth of each block the bottom of each block because we have just the one block so 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 this loop is going to just read like a one double 
right um, so it's gonna be one double right one one double uh, it's gonna be one block and then this is gonna be the bottom of that one block block that's 150 meters and then the rest of the input parameters is um, H H that's the grid spacing of the R file basically for specifying the velocity model uh, and then we have to specify the X and Y direction and then the Z direction right so it's so this input file basically tells us that uh, the grid spacing for the velocity model in the X and Y direction is 2 2 meter and then 1 meter in the vertical direction right and this this velocity model grid doesn't have to be identical to the simulation grid it can be uh, it can has its own grid spacing as long as you capture the major variations of the velocity model. And then and then the code is gonna read the read the read the VS dot ping file that I got from. It's a binary file that's um, that doesn't have any header. It's just gonna uh, have a certain kind of length. Right. But it's a three dimensional vector, so we can actually read it and. Uh, uh, and then just uh, convert the entire thing into a R file format, right? So so it's just reading the VS dot ping file as a three dimensional vector, and it's a double, right? It's a double binary. It's a binary file. So 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 it's a three dimensional model, and then it's gonna have its own uh, dimension, and then it, the, the the model the three dimensional vector goes into this particular function to actually um, to actually uh, being uh, sort of reformatted, and then MDL, this object is going to write the R file, right? So, so once I finish doing this kind of thing, once I finish doing this kind of thing, um, once I finish running RFG.sh, uh, then it's going to create the R file. That's BW1.R. The output file name is specified right here, right? And this R file is a single binary file uh, that's going to specify the the velocity model together with topor, right? So topor sits on the top of the block of the file, and then velocity model sits uh, at the next block, the next, uh, the lower block. And that's that's um, that's one of the very important inputs that's going to be used by SW4, right? And uh, and uh, and uh, yeah, I think that's. Um, uh, um, Let's 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 uh, let's finish this recording now, and then I'll create another one to to explain the rest of the procedures. This one is too long, I guess. Uh.